Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Token Post interview. Today we have invited someone very special from the investing.com. He's a professional analyst, Mr. Clement Thibault. Welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you. So before we get on to the interview, uh, could you give a brief introduction about yourself and your role at investing.com as an analyst? Sure. So um, I've been at investing.com for three years now mm -hmm. in the role of an analyst, which means that I look at projects, I look at stocks. And, you know, I do a deep drill down and I try to figure out if there's an investment opportunity or not. And I do that for our readers so that our readers can come to investing.com, see mm -hmm. the research and, you know, and kind of give them a leg up on the competition and being able to you know, benefit from the analysis for their own trading. Then do you personally get into uh, trading? I don't get into trading as much as I get into investing because mm -hmm. I'm more of a longer time frame. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to trading or uh, investing, there is something called a sweet spot. Mm -hmm. So uh, from your viewpoint, when it comes to crypto, what particular situations or sign would you define or identify as a sweet spot? All right, so crypto is very hard in this regard. I mean, there's, it's very hard to find a sweet spot because the market is very volatile. And again, I'm, I'm not such more as a chartist. I'm not really a chartist. Mm -hmm. Like there are some people in, at investing.com mm -hmm. which have their analysis and you know this is what they do. Because I'm more of a fundamental guy, finding the sweet spot, you know, in the crypto market is a lot harder than in the stock market because mm -hmm. the underlying fundamentals are not as clear, you know, and the data is not really there. Mm -hmm. So crypto is not yet ripe for a fundamental sweet spot. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's hard to find. But of course, I, I still hear, you know, my peers at investing.com really scratching their heads a lot of times and trying, you know, to pinpoint what happens. And right now you see Bitcoin kind of trading in a six to seven you know thousand range mm -hmm. and i know that a lot of people you know at our place like to trade that range mm -hmm. so they would short it at a certain point and then go long when it reaches the bottom and they do it up and down and up and down mm -hmm. so i'd say that this would be like their sweet spot right now mm -hmm. so uh explain you explained that uh you are more of a fundamental investor mm -hmm. so uh but then which means that you don't really follow with the volatility trend. Mm -hmm. However, crypto is experiencing volatility all throughout this year, mm -hmm. has been experiencing it. So what would you say as the primary cause behind that trend? Well, you know, at the end of the day, I think that the volatility, it depends on, again, it depends on your time frame. Mm -hmm. if, if you are, of course, trading like a minute or five minute or 10 minute, mm -hmm. then yeah, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like the volatility goes up and down and you can get surprised and everything. On the longer time frame, the volatility matters less mm -hmm. and then we look more at longer trends. Mm -hmm. So uh, I myself am not a professional uh, investor or trader. Mm -hmm. However, uh, being in crypto, I tried things here and there, mm -hmm. but then I couldn't get a hold of all the indicators, all the charts, all the signs. I real I know that you mentioned that you're not you're a fundamental investor. However, I'm pretty sure you're capable of identifying what functions serve as an indicator. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's your go to strategy when it comes to trading or indicators or functions and uh what would you recommend for daily traders All right so i know that a lot of people and a lot of professionals that i respect mm -hmm. uh, really like moving averages mm -hmm. and this is one of their go-to strategies and it's definitely one of the most important indicators mm -hmm. that you know that you can use so and and you can see often you know even if you believe or don't believe in technical analysis which is also a thing mm -hmm. you can see that the price reacts mm -hmm. to the moving average so it's kind of a prophecy that fulfills itself in that way that if many people believe that it will happen, they act as if it will happen and then it actually happens. Mm -hmm. So even though, you know, there might not be anything behind it, you know, the popular ones are the ones that matter mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, this is what causes a human reaction mm -hmm. and the human reaction moves the market. Mm -hmm. But then crypto is really uh, interactive with the rumors, all the news. I know it goes somewhere we don't expect, but it's going up and down you know, regardless of it. But it still takes into takes the news or the rumors into account when it comes to pricing. So would you say that the news or the rumors would have effect, uh, does have effect on the uh, initial price of all the cryptos? Definitely. We have a saying, you know, that generally in the market, mm -hmm. which is uh, buy the rumors, sell the news. <laughs> So, so yeah, so you want to, you want to buy and you want to ride that wave of excitement, mm -hmm. you know, because the excitement is usually exaggerating reality, mm -hmm. right? So people get too excited. So when, when people get excited, you know, that's when you should get in. And just before reality sets in, mm -hmm. just before the actual news come out, mm -hmm. that's when you want to sell. Mm. 
I think that'd be the best advice anybody can give. <laughs> right, all right, yeah. So when it comes to trading, there definitely is a trend, but you explained a little bit earlier that uh, you see it from a uh, longer time frame. Mm-hmm. However, the crypto market has been experiencing some bear market for the past mm-hmm. few months. And uh, it ha- it's a bear market like no other mm-hmm. because it went up, but then it's kind of settling down. So would you say that uh, the outlook on the crypto market is bright or headed for a bright future? Or would you say that it's going to continue holding at a 6,000 or somewhat of a level? Right. So regarding the bear market, first of all, I mean, we've seen harsher bear markets in the past in Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. You know, people, so people, yeah, people that have been there, you know, four or five years ago, mm-hmm. you know, and there's been longer bear markets, there's been harsher bear markets. Mm-hmm. So I think that, you know, of course, if you were in it for the quick profit and you bought at 20,000 and now we're at six, you're panicking a little bit and I get that. But, you know, when you look at where Bitcoin was five, five, six years ago, even where it was last year, where it started 2017, we're still in the long term bull market. Mm-hmm. And even though we spiked, you know, because of the excitement and it's kind of like by the rumor, you mm-hmm. know, Bitcoin was a rumor. Listen, it's going to blow up. It's going to. Yeah. So that's what, you know, it, at the end caused this spike in the price. If you look at the longer you know, horizon, we're not really even in a bear market. It's mm-hmm. been a multi-year bull market. Compared with, to two or three years ago. With some, you know, spikes and bubbles along the way. But that's mm-hmm. the nature of a speculative asset. Mm-hmm. So uh, one interesting comment I heard was about the break-even point of Bitcoin, mm-hmm. about the incentive to intense inten- incentives to miners, and the break-even point uh, influences the price to hold around six thousand dollars because that's where the miners get their uh, monetary incentive to the right point where they can profit out of it. Mm-hmm. So uh, and also there have been claims that the FX traders, the big traders, are trying to keep it at the pit, keep the Bitcoin price at around $6,000. Right. So what's your comment on that? So I think that, you know, looking at the chart, and even though I'm not a chartist, it's it's pretty obvious that there's a hard floor set mm-hmm. at around 6,000. I think that the lowest we've seen it fall was 5,800, I want to say. And that was surprisingly low because, you know, it, it never broke that level. Mm-hmm. And you can see uh, time and again, you know, it rises up a little bit to like six, five, six, seven. Mm-hmm. It drops to six and it bounces. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I definitely think that the market is being held up. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, there, there's, there's a hard floor at 6,000 at the moment. And, you know, that creates even more interest if this, you know, if the floor will get broken at some point. Mm-hmm. Because right now we're at six and it's been like that for months. Mm-hmm. But I've seen some analysis calling, you know, for five, for three and a half. And if the price is really being artificially held up at six, mm-hmm. you know, what will happen if there will be such a downward selling pressure? Yes, of course. That even, you know, whatever is holding Bitcoin at six, you know, will break. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, I think that's a question a lot of people don't want to get the answer to <laughs> and are hoping that, you know, we stay at six and we don't fall <laughs> below and we never find out what happened when the floor breaks because mm-hmm. it definitely can get, you know, pretty ugly. So uh, mentioning about the price holding around $6,000, the influx of institutional money is what all the daily investors are waiting for. All the news with ETF, the news with facts. Also, the institutional investment, such as Goldman Sachs, is what creates a ambience or trend where people are thinking, hey, this is going to go up sometimes. You know, this institutional decision is going to make the price go up. So uh, would you say that those news or those influx of money would have an effect on the uh, crypto market or especially on BTC? Mm-hmm. So for me, that's a classic example of, of buy the rumor, sell the news mm-hmm. that we just mentioned. <laughs> Everyone is very excited about institutional money. But just last just last week, Fidelity launched the Fidelity Digital Asset, so mm-hmm. a custodian for you know institutional solution for holding crypto. Mm-hmm. We haven't seen the market react to that at all. You know, Bitcoin has been stagnant, as if you know Fidelity is not a trillion dollar company actually getting into crypto, mm-hmm. and they are. So you would expect that to be huge news for the community, yeah, yeah. and you would expect that you know the market to react to that and to see that as some kind of a you know the the early institutional you know, coming into Bitcoin, Mm -hmm. but the price hasn't been affected at all. Mm -hmm. So it's a classic by the excitement of the institutional money. But, you know, when the institutionals come, nothing really happens. Mm -hmm. So so by the rumors, sell the news. (laughs) That's the same with the ETFs? 
Because that's been pending for like three or four months. Anyway. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> and personally, I don't see an ETF being approved anytime soon. Mm-hmm. So I came across your comment that you are a huge supporter of the ideology behind cryptos or Bitcoin, which is P2P electronic cash system for everyone. Mm-hmm. So however, uh, with its high, high fees and slow speeds, people are calling for an a alternative, mm-hmm. which led to the debates, the famous debate of BTC of course, and BCH. Of course, of course. So what's your comment on the current status when it comes to BTC and also your comment on the debate as well? So, you know, right now, I think that BTC blocks at like are in 95 percent congestion, but we haven't seen fees rise up. Mm-hmm. So fees really go up when it's, you know, when there's a crazy load on the system and under normal circumstances, you know, even today at 95 percent, you know, load, it works well. So that's the first thing. Uh, but yeah, the, the debate, the ideology for me is really about, you know, censorship resistance mm-hmm. and really you know, today it's very hard to really own something because mm-hmm. your money, it's in a bank, but someone can really easily take it away from you. You know, if they suspect you of anything, even if you did it or you didn't do it, you know, your money is frozen mm-hmm. and you won't have access to your funds. Mm-hmm. And, and crypto kind of, kind of comes as a reaction to that, mm-hmm. you know, as a, way, as a way of saying, listen, this is my money and you can't take it away, mm-hmm. which is something, you know, even though it's, of course, used by a lot of people that are completely over the line, and I would ne- in, never, you know, condone any of it. Mm. But, you know, it's still it's still appealing in a way to really be able to be in control of your own financials. Now, regarding the BTC BCH <laughs> debate, uh, first of all, it saddens me to see, you know, really the the animosity between the two groups, mm. and I understand why. I mean, there's a lot of financial interests, mm. and you know, a lot of people holding BTC, a lot of people holding BCH. Everyone wants to make money. And one of the ways is kind of, you know, to go head to head and to try to prop, you know, the price of whatever they're investing in. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so that, that first of all needs to be taken into account. Regarding my views on the debate, I say, like, let the market decide. Mm-hmm. You know, I think the, 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 the collective wisdom, <laughs> you know, is smarter than any of each of us individually. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think that, you know, you see the price of, of BTC today. You see the price of BCH today. And, and you see that the market just com- values them completely differently. Mm. Uh, so yeah, so BTC definitely has a big advantage when it comes to, uh, to how the market values it. So the market's going to sort things out eventually? I believe so. Mm-hmm. So uh, that is all the questions we have prepared today. But since we, don't, we rarely get the chance to have a professional analyst on our channel, I wanted to end with an advice for our audience. Sure. So uh, as a professional investor, what, of, what advice would you give to everyday traders taking part in crypto? Well, especially in Korea, because Korea is really uh, where the hot trend is going, where everybody's excited about crypto. Yeah, definitely. I'm uh, excited about uh, crypto as well. So uh, what I would say is treat it like a job. right? And I know that a lot of people are trading, you know, kind of as a side hustle and they're not really putting a lot of effort into it. And like a lot of things in life, if you don't put, you know, a full effort into it, then it's probably not going to succeed. So that's the first thing I would do. And the second thing is that you need to be committed to continually learning, right? Because we're in a profession. I mean, I'm in a profession and you are in a, you know, you are also trading and learning is always important because you can see that the world changes and you need to know how to react and you need to know your history and you need to know, you know, you need to be able to, to analyze future trends. And the techniques always change. So being committed to learning and treating trading like an actual job and putting the full effort into it like you put into your job, that would definitely be my best advice if you want to succeed in the markets. Such a great advice. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Clement Thibault, the Senior Analyst of Investing.com. Thank you for watching.